there, crime fighters. Today was a very interesting in touch where Officer Don and Rayleigh DA discussed smart guns and upskirt criminals. And then also special guest intern Larkin Walker discussed social media with them. Thanks for listening, crime fighters. Join us next week. This is In Touch. Massachusetts. Yeah, the high court has said that it's okay for a guy to take upskirt photos of women riding the Boston subway. Now, the background on this, this is a subway worker who was routinely taking pictures of girls' skirts and... Uh, you know, Up their skirts. Yeah, he was you know, taking pictures there. And they, the, the police set up a sting operation to catch this guy. They catch him, and then they charge him under the voyeurism statute in that state. Uh, but the high court says, nope, you know what, the Voyeurism statute specifically says uh, that, that, <laughs> that if things are covered, uh, things that, meaning things, genitals. genitals and breasts and all that, uh, that you're na not able to make this charge. So they let this guy walk based on that little technicality. Uh, first of all, what say you, Ray Larson? It's, yeah, okay, don't say that. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's bull, right? <laughs> Baloney. Okay, yeah, yeah. so what, what the court said is, well, there's a, there's a loophole here because since the women were wearing panties, you didn't really see anything, so this guy sticking his phone up their skirt and taking a picture is okay. Is that crazy? Well, that it's, it's, do you want to know why people lose respect for the court system? This is it. Uh, this is a dumb... Uh, interpretation of a common sense law. It, it protects people from harassment, uh, that sort of thing. And to come up with this kind of a, uh, a, a ruling mm -hmm. is just disgusting. And, and it, it's, it's very disappointing because the whole point is that people have a right to be protected from this kind of behavior and to have the appellate court just forget the spirit of the law and get stuck on commas and semicolons and technicalities is just awful. Well and you, you get let me tell you how I feel. Yeah that, that <laughs> word interpretation that is part of the uh, the, the process when, when the legislature writes a law at some point if it gets appealed the judges are they're supposed to look at it and not only look at what it says to the letter, but what, what was the intent of the law. And, and clearly the intent of this law, when this was passed in the state legislature, was to prevent guys from putting their from phone, doing just from what doing the exactly did. this. And, and, and because they didn't put the word panties in there or covered, then the, the court's just going to throw it out. And you know what, this, this boils down to a power trip for, for a lot of these, these justices too. It's just an opportunity for them to say, oh, we're so powerful that we struck down this law and look what we've done. I firmly believe that, 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 that it gets into their psyche a little bit. But it doesn't do the people any good. So the legislature's going to have to come back and rewrite this thing now, I guess, to address it. Which well, is going to cost no, no, I'm, no I'm reminded, I'm, did you ever watch Christmas Story? It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah the Ralphie mm -hmm. in the Christmas Story. And this, this reminds me of, of something my dad told me when I was, you know, we moved around a lot because he was in the military and, and every time I'd move I was gonna I had to kind of uh, adjust a new environment and a lot of times you end up being the subject of oh ridicule and that kind of stuff because you're the new guy yeah and so this happened when I was oh I guess in the fifth grade and and there were three or four people that uh, were just harassing me and kind of bullying me, and I was kind of quiet. My dad, what's eating you? One night, and I said, "Well, these guys are, you know, giving me trouble and so forth." And he says, uh, "Well, let me tell you how I'd handle it." And I said, "Well, I, okay." He said, "You great, you look, you identify the biggest one of the bunch." And when he does it, just don't even hesitate. Just punch him right in the face. Just punch him. Mm -hmm. And he says, you're going to get in all kind of trouble with the principal. But I want you to know something. 
you're not going to get in trouble with me. And I said, that'll be the end of it. And so uh, I did it. And I, he was right. I got sent home. And, but I didn't have one more problem with the whole thing. Now, if I were the boyfriend or the husband of one of these girls on that <laughs> or the girl, thing, you know, <laughs> yeah, I would punch this guy right in his big fat ass nose, and uh, that'd be the end of that. Well, that's great, except these laws are supposed to keep people from having to do that. Then so. I would deal with my assault force yeah. degree <laughs> <That's right>. charge. <laughs> yeah. Now, how this applies in Kentucky is we've looked up the voyeurism statute in Kentucky, and it says pretty much the same thing that we're looking at in Southern State, too. It, it says, um, in Kentucky, it's illegal for a person to photograph or record a non-consenting person's genitals or breasts if that person is in a place where he or she would reasonably expect that the body parts won't be recorded. So since it doesn't, doesn't really cover whether or not you have underwear on, we could get in the same trick bag, but... Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, I don't see... I would interp interpret that differently. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that if that you can uh, take a photograph of a woman mm -hmm. and uh, without seeing genitals or breasts, mm -hmm. but the spirit of it is you're still taking a photograph of her breasts, you see. Now, whether they're covered or not, wouldn't phase me in the least if I'm a judge. I mean, that's the spirit. First of all, it's the spirit of the law, and I would interpret it just like that. It's it's goofiness. There's no doubt about it. But the even goofier part about it is under the, the House bill that we often talk. Which House bill is that? 463. 463. If a police officer can, in Kentucky witnesses uh, somebody take a picture of even his girlfriend or wife's skirt. He's not supposed to arrest him. He's supposed to write him a ticket. Or punch him in the nose. Yeah, the so I mean, there's another jacked up thing right there that, that has to be dealt with. So anyway, you know, I think in Kentucky it's it's still illegal to do that and, and, and whatever. But it's just ridiculous that they would even rule that way. You know? Can I bring up another yeah, subject? go ahead. Well, on the way out here, <clears throat> Larkin Walker and uh, Allison Beck, who are here today, um, were talking about how you and... Deanne were talking about short people or tall no, people. No, no, yeah. no. That, listen, that's not what we were doing. Yeah. Really? She said, but I never, in fact, I purposely didn't use the word short in this. I said taller people are less likely to have this characteristic. That's a study. I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And it's jealousy. They're less taller people are less likely to be jealous. So she's spinning this. I never. Me. I thought of you. I never <laughs> said the word short in this whole thing because I didn't I want Look, I'm a towering five foot nine, so I don't have that problem. Jealousy. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're doing something on our Facebook page. It's, uh, we do the, like yesterday, it was Wednesday, and this was the title of this. And it says, Wednesday, time for Hey, 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 It's Hump Day, Ray the DA's News and Comment. Every morning we do this. And, uh, and uh, we'll talk about that. In a minute. For example, the Smart Girl Scout. Did you know about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this Smart Girl Scout knows how to sell Girl Scout cookies. In San Francisco, she set up her cookie stand, like we see everywhere these days, outside a California medical marijuana store. <laughs> she sold her entire supply of Girl Scout cookies, also known as munchies to these potheads, in 45 minutes. You gotta admire this now. That's something that Abby could that's, have done. That's innovative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there is the, uh, the wimpy criminal report. Uh, a Texas man fled police custody while he was being hand, while he was handcuffed. Then he called later, he called 911 for help because his hand, his handcuffs were too tight. It's a common complaint. Yeah. Yeah. So he runs away. Yeah. And realizes, yeah. oh, by the way, I had a guy do that to me one time. Yeah. Run away in handcuffs. It was terrible. Yeah, Larkin, you got to understand that Officer Don, it, it, that's a legitimate copyrighted name, Officer yeah, Don. Yeah, that's right. Um, because he used to be some some sort of a policeman. Well, anyway, so we get on the PA because this is three o'clock in the morning. This guy runs away in handcuffs. Mm -hmm. And we get on the PA and say, look, you know, 
you're, you're handcuffed and you're not in the best neighborhood in the world, uh, you might want to come back so we can take you to jail. This guy running around in a high crime neighborhood with handcuffs on probably was not the smartest idea. And you know what? He did. He, 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 got, he came out of the bushes and, and re-surrendered. Re-surrender. Re re <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, we just, just called it even because I don't want the embarrassment of having to tell my sergeant that I'll have to get, get away from it. So. That's so, good. Whatever. Okay. Well, I want to talk. Can we talk to Larkin a minute? Sure. Okay. Okay, Larkin, tell us, introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Larkin Walker. I'm a senior at the University of Kentucky. I'm interning with Ray in his office as a PR professional. What does PR mean? It's public relations, so it's anything um, where a brand or a company is interacting with their consumer. I pretty much handle any the in-between. So what would Ray's consumer be? Ray's consumer is just the general public, um, Lexington and the surrounding area, anybody he serves, and anybody interested in crime, basically. And that's, so th does he tend to, when, when you're marketing Ray Larson, the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Attorney's Office, do, do you have a, a, a felon section where you try to address specific <laughs> people who maybe have felonies that don't like Ray? Um, he's got a problem in that area. There's a lot of felons do not, they don't push the like button. Very right, often. you know. How do you deal with that? <laughs> um, well, I don't really have to track them. They kind of just come on their own. Um, not even felons, just general people. Um, but we honestly don't get as many as you would think. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think Ray's one to mess with. Do they try so to post on his wall? No. Uh, like you Larson, you no. <laughs> no. If they did, I would just say thank you so much for your interest yeah, and, and we it. appreciate the comments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, faith, I mean, obviously, there's so many social media avenues these days. It's hard to keep up with. You've got Facebook, Instagram, okay, name Twitter. What What's the hottest one, and which one do you see up and coming? Um, man, I think the hottest one probably is Facebook for my generation. Okay. Um, or no, I'm sorry. Twitter for my Twitter. generation. Okay. My mom's a big Facebook person, yeah. and that's kind of gearing towards you older, know yeah. older demographics. Yeah, we heard that. Whoa, um, whoa, whoa, whoa! That's like the short guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I well, think Facebook's for old people. Facebook's Twitter's for old people. For young people. Twitter is the newspaper for my generation. Okay. Um, Instagram is getting really big. Pinterest is very now, big. Now, Instagram, yeah. that's photos, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and so. What, why is it? Why do you think Instagram is becoming more popular than Twitter? Or what, or what would what would make a person gravitate toward Instagram versus Twitter? Um, Instagram, I think, is becoming really popular because you don't have to read anything. Pictures worth a thousand words. Um, our generation just kind of, kind of skims through things, and you skim through a magazine and just kind of look at pictures. So, you know, you can get a lot of cross with just a photo. Do you think that's good? You know, no, I don't. Books? Why I don't think, just pass out coloring books. I you don't think, want it any deeper than that. Yeah, I know. It's a tragedy because people aren't really educating themselves yeah. and they're just kind of taking a picture and making their own assumptions of what it is, but it is what it is. So you're not going to have on Instagram, there's not a whole lot of social messages or news or anything. No, I don't pictures. think anything that we deal with is really 110% Instagrammable. But so what kind of pictures do you post on your personal Instagram account? Um, let's see, I posted, I don't post that often, I post like once a month maybe, but I posted one, I won a pageant this weekend, and before that I, po I post pictures of my dog. A lot of selfies? No, I'm not, I'm not a selfie person, but some people are, and that's a majority of, it's self-promotion, that's for sure. And then Pinterest, now I've seen that, my wife, I see her mess with the Pinterest. Uh-huh. And that, now Pinterest is sort of interesting. Uh, it, it's... It, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like you take things that you think are cool or interesting that you've seen other people post and you repost it. Uh, yeah, I guess you can make comments on it too. Mm -hmm. um, so Pinterest is a media sharing site. You can be on any website and pin something to a board and it just kind of organizes everything, your thoughts and ideas. I don't, really don't know how I survived without it because I couldn't cook. They weren't for Pinterest. Cause so, was, so if you if you're trying to think what you're going to cook, you go to yeah, Pinterest. Yeah, I would I would Pinterest something before I Googled it. Now, like if I'm looking yeah. for a recipe for chicken, I'll search on. Is Pinterest. it because it's more visual? Is um, reason, it's or? more visual, and I think there's just more. It's it's really well organized. If something has ten thousand pins, I'm probably going to take that advice over something on Google that you can't really see how many times. Well, let me ask this. <clears throat> see, I don't I don't know much about the social media other than the fact that I can name smart pistols. Have you heard about smart pistols? Just a little bit. School me on them. They've hit the shelves in California. The first smart gun has been put on the shelf by retailers in California. This gun is only able to function if it's accompanied by a 
a special wristwatch which is sold separately. It's active the the wristwatch activates the gun by a pin number and is placed near the gun. Once the wristwatch is activated, it sends a signal to this pistol allowing it to be unlocked. Otherwise, the gun will stay in a locked position, unable to fire. Um, now this is probably going to end up being the way of guns in the future. Uh, but it costs about $1,400 for this gun. Uh, and the, the watch is an additional $400. And that's twice the cost of your average 40 caliber Glock pistol so but that's that's happening um, and another scary story has to do with how you know everybody thinks GPS is the answer to everything you never did from the very beginning when they started talking about let's put these ankle monitors on people to keep track of them you never thought that was a good idea and I hate to give you credit for that, but it, as in California, as usual, that, but, but it, it'll come this way. Mm -hmm. um, the probation officers in Los Angeles County relied on these GPS monitoring devices, ankle bracelets, to keep track of offenders that had been recently released from prison. And the, the report is, um, due to the volume of alerts from the devices, they're uh, which are often um, blocked by uh, low battery probation officers have routinely begun to ignore mm -hmm. the alerts that these people have cut it off or uh, otherwise violated the condition, you know, gone out of a zone, that sort of thing. I mean, yeah, the, the issue with the GPS, from our perspective, is I knew it would be abused, it would be used. Uh, you know, initially they said they're going to slap it on people with bad checks and stuff like that, but, but now they're slapping them on rapists and burglars and people like that and, it, and creating a false sense of security that these people are being watched. And here's the deal. You can't assume that these people aren't fools. I'm talking about, you know, a rapist is not an individual that you and I can relate to. So why do you think they're going to follow the rules of wearing a GP? They're not going to. And unfortunately, they're spontaneous people. They act on urges that we can't relate to. You can't expect them to behave themselves. If someone's that dangerous, they have to be monitored. Lock them up. If they're so dangerous, you got to watch them. Lock them up, or don't monitor them at all. It just doesn't. It, it's crazy that they that they're using it for that. Well, <clears throat> the, one of the great lines I ever saw was had to do with uh, whether or not people ought to own weapons, and the the guy that that says you ought to own a weapon to defend yourself, says, call 911 if you want. Mm -hmm. But by the time they'll be, they respond to that, they'll be there ready to take a picture of a death scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to defend yourself, get a gun. Now let me tell you something else about California. And this, the, the reason I bring up California is this stuff is no, typically a year or two away mm -hmm. from us. Uh, this Governor Moonbeam Jerry Brown has released 1,400 inmates who had been sentenced to serve the rest of their life in prison. And those are, 80% of those are, were murderers. The rest of them are rapists and kidnappers. People thought, aha, these victims say, aha, finally some relief from this twerp that has done this thing to me or somebody in my family. And guess what? They're letting them out. And with no apologies. They're no. Just saying, and they're, they're saying, well, the court says we've got to let them out, so we'll let them out. And that's it. There's nobody to complain to, nobody to, to cry to, nobody to beg or plead, not even those. No, well, orders. you can, but they don't listen. Nah, they're not. They're, well, they're letting so many out. You, it's just, it's all, it all runs together now. That's it. 